another video everybody. Today we're gonna to be working on the drift truck yet again. We are finally going to be finishing this bed that we cut up way back when we made the custom four link suspension. As you can tell, there's a hole in the bed and I wanna be able to use this truck for hauling stuff. I did go pick up that metal, but the problem is that when you pick up stuff that's long or really, when you pick up anything, it has to rest on the suspension, on the chassis, and it's not actually in the bed. And then also if you're trying to transport something that's small, and something that rolls, it's just gonna roll through the hole and then be dumped onto the street, which obviously is not good. So we're gonna go ahead and make a new section of bed that covers that up, that welds to the factory bed. It will be removable, at least part of it will be removable so we can remove it and service the car or the truck easier. Right now it is nice because I can change dampening and do a lot of basic stuff just from the bed. So we wanna be able to keep that, but we wanna block it off. And then after we make the new section of bed, we are going to bedline the bed with some Durabac. We use this on the Rally Miata. This is the best bedliner, best stuff that I've ever used. It's not just bedliner, it can really be used for anything. Comes in a bunch of colors, a bunch of different textures. It's flexible, slip resistant, abrasion resistant, chemical resistant, heat and fresh and salt water resistant, UV and corrosion resistant. It's just awesome stuff. If you wanna check out some Durabac, please go into the link in the description. If you buy something from Durabac, it helps support the channel, so that's awesome. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. It's gonna be pretty simple. Some one inch steel box tube and some just sheet metal and weld it all together. And then maybe we can try hauling some stuff. <laughs> See how much this thing can haul before bottoming out. <laughs> The other thing we're gonna be doing is relocating filler neck for the gas the gas tank. As you can tell, it's right there in the middle of the bed. We're gonna make a steel tube that leads the stock cap all the way up kind of to the wheel well over there, and then we'll, we'll put it there. So that way, instead of having to reach over the gas tank, getting gas all over the bed, it'll just go right into the corner. If we wanted to, we could actually bring it all the way back over to the stock location here, but I think I wanna put a battery cutoff switch in there because the battery is right under there. So let's get started with this cover plate.
love seeing the truck like this. I think it's it's just so cool to see the bed completely off and more importantly, to see that. Just It's so weird to think that that's what I'm driving. Essentially, it's just a frame with a little piece of sheet metal covering it all up. Everything looks good. Some things are getting a little bit of surface rust because, you know, spray paint can only do so much on bare metal when there's cracks and chips and tires flinging stuff all over the place. But in general, it does look still really good. Everything is still solid. Everything is still working. There's no cracks or anything in the welds. Everything is, everything is awesome. And that's why this thing only weighs 2,600 pounds is because look at it. <laughs> It's just the two big pieces of metal and some stuff on it. Now, in the last drift truck video where we fixed the death wobble, you guys mentioned that the tie rod angle was off and that was what was causing the death wobble. And you guys are right, the, the tie rod angle is not ideal. When the car is on the ground, tie rods are angled up a little bit and forward a little bit. So that causes bump stare, especially since the tie rods are not even lengths, it causes bump stare. But it's really not too bad. And more importantly, I don't think that causes the death wobble but it might, and we are going to fix that. We're gonna be making some new upper control arms to dial in the camber, and then we're gonna be making some new tie rod mounts for the hub, pretty much the bracket that bolts the tie rod to the hub. We cut and shortened the stock ones, but we're gonna make some tubular ones that bring the tie rod down more and closer in. So it'll give us more angle, it will correct the steering geometry, and hopefully everything will all be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue work on this. We're gonna tack in this frame a whole lot more. There's only a couple tacks holding it in. Then we'll start putting some sheet metal on, then we'll primer it, we'll bedline the entire trunk, and then we'll start working on that um, gas tank mount thing. She's finally out of gas. This tank has been on zero PSI for the past month. She's finally dry. Which means I need to go curbside pick up a new gas tank. <laughs> stand on it just because I don't want to dent where the you know bed's being held up but it's plenty strong for sure. We're gonna cut out some sheets to go in front and in back and then a top sheet and weld that in too. some really awesome news. So I put the bed temporarily back on. I'm gonna have to take it back off to paint everything underneath because doing that with the frame attached would be annoying. But I wanted to put the bed on so I could look at the gas filler neck situation. You know, originally, what I said at the beginning of the video was that we will run a tube from, you know, this is the filler neck right there for the gas up to kind of like right here and put it there. Problem is that this thing is too tall. So if I want it to be flush against the top, like we can't fit a 90 degrees hose, then it would have to like go down and then 
back up, which I feel like would cause issues when filling. So if I wanted to put it in the bed, it would have to be pretty high, which would be ugly. But then I looked back at the stock location and it's higher than it would be in here. And there is a hole right there, big enough to fit a tube through. So I think we can make the stock location filler neck work with the, the relocated fuel tank. And the really cool thing is that the size of the fuel tank filler, this right here, is the same size as the roll cage tubing. So I can use the tube bender to bend up a perfect tube that just flows nicely and goes to the stock filler neck. So, <laughs> I think that's what we're gonna do. I said this was gonna be, you know, a kill switch, but we can put that somewhere else. It would be cooler if this was, you know, the fuel tank. So that's that's really exciting. I'm gonna have to wait until Monday, unfortunately, to finish it because I have to get some thinner wall tubing. I'm not using this really thick, really heavy stuff to transport gasoline. I want some thin stuff. So that is probably why this video is out on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm sorry it took so long, but I had to wait for the metal store to be open. Also, uh, Saturday is, today is Jared's birthday, so we're doing stuff with Jared. Then tomorrow's Mother's Day, so. Oops, sorry guys. But now that we know the gas filling situation, pull the bed back off and start prepping this area for bed liner. Man, I kept having hiccups there, sorry. lot of sanding, a lot of cleaning, a lot of hours, the bed is ready to be durabacked. So it looks really awesome. Went over it with 60 grit and cleaned it. The seam seal looks great. Everything is awesome. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to self etching prime the bare metal. And then once that dries, apply the durabacked. Expected, but it's done. The bed is repaired, it's bedlined with some awesome Duraback, and the fuel filler neck that goes to the stock location is in there. I'd say let's bring it out, get some good shots of the bed, test the fuel filler neck because I'm, I'm not sure if it's got any leaks or if it flows correctly. Hopefully, it's all good. Uh, and then call the video. <laughs> Is choosing the worst time to drive about a sun visor. At least this time I got some sunglasses. Alright, let's see how this works. This is so much better than uh, <laughs> undoing the uh, the lid of the filler neck that's zip tied to the frame. Oh man. Okay. Oh, you know, it might help if I actually take the cap off.
cut. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, so it kind of works. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tight corner. See, that's the problem. It's not terribly slow. You can't go full blast though, because if you do, click. Huh, that's about what I expected. So admittedly, it's not perfect, but considering the location of everything, it's as good as it can get, and it's much better than what it was before. I can actually, you know, it actually looks like a finished product now, which is, which is fine. And you know, it took me like three minutes to fill seven gallons, so that's not bad. Mission success. The truck bed, first of all, looks awesome with the bed liner, with the finished floor, with no hole in it. It functions, filler neck is good, everything is awesome. A lot of you guys may think of this as a waste of time, and it kind of is, but one of the things I really wanted to do this year was get all of my previous builds super dialed. You know, it's one thing to have a car or a truck that's fun to rip, but it's another thing to have it be a dialed car that's fun to drive around. It's fun to drive on the street, it's fun to daily, all those kind of things. And although this was a simple thing and it may not really be used much, it does a, a huge job at making the truck seem more finished and seem more dialed. And that, that's why it was worth it. Huge thank you again to Duraback for providing the Duraback or the bed liner to use on the bed here. Like I said, it looks awesome and I'm sure it will hold up really well. It's not actually quite dry yet. There's some spots that are still wet, so I'm not gonna test it yet. But. We'll see. Other than that, guys, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. If you didn't, please give it a dislike. Dislike. Sorry again for the delay. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. You know, actually, I haven't checked this. I think we might be at 500K or close, really close. 499,792. By the time this video goes out to the public, we'll be at 500,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. I'm gonna do something special. I haven't thought of it yet, but thank you guys, seriously. In the next video, we're gonna be making custom tubular control arms for the Rail Miata and getting that 100% finished, ready to rip. Of course, if you wanna see that video right now, you can head over to Patreon, become a patron and watch it. Um, other than that, guys, have a great day. Goodbye. Peace out.